guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sarah. If you're new here, it's good to have you and welcome. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make slow cooker yogurt. I love kitchen hacks that save me time and money and this is very quick and it saves me a lot of money for a family that likes yogurt a lot. So um, if you already make this, please stick around to the end because I have a question for you. Now I have two slow cookers, both were gifts to me and I love them both for their own reasons. But for me, I've had the most success with my stone uh, slow cooker and I, for me it's just worked out the best i've only tried it twice in this metal one and i think i could make it work in here but i would have to put a little more time into adjusting uh, times or temperatures to get it right because it hasn't worked for me the two times i tried it so i just stick with this one i have this one out because i'm about to make a bone broth but this one's going to be working on my yogurt at the same time i like to use whole milk when i'm making yogurt and I do half a gallon, which is about two liters, which is about two quarts, which is about eight cups. I measure because I'm a measurer. And I'm a very fancy kitchen person, cook, whatever. As you can see, my slow cooker doesn't even have a handle on it anymore, but I love it so much I don't care and I just pull it up with my nails. <laughs> so I just throw that in there, set it on low for two and a half hours. By the way, I love slow cookers that have timers. They are lifesaver. Automatically, my slow cooker switches to keep warm after that. So it needs to go two and a half hours on low and then it needs to sit at warm for three hours. I like to start my yogurt around lunchtime. It's a good gauge for me that after dinner I can put the yogurt in the oven and I'm good to go. I can start it about up till three or four and still get away with it. Uh, Cause then I would be putting it in, if I started at three, I'd be putting it in the oven at five or 8.30, four would be 9.30, that kind of thing. So I have some time in there in the afternoon where I can start it. And by the way, every time I've started it earlier and left it longer, I have never ever had a problem. I've never not left it the five and a half hours, but I have often left it way past that five and a half hours and it's always turned out perfectly for me. Okay, so I'm, I'm just about to go to bed, so I am going to take care of my yogurt right now. It's actually 10 p.m., so I know that it has gone much longer than five and a half hours, but I have never had a problem doing it that late, like I told you before. Okay, so next I take a half a cup of live culture yogurt. So usually I just use yogurt from the last batch and I whisk that in either with a whisk or a fork. Oops, I'm spraying it all everywhere. I just use a, I always save a, a half a cup from the last batch right away and use it, unless it's been a couple weeks since I made yogurt, which happens once in a while. If it's been a while, then I just start with a fresh yogurt. I'll just use a half a cup of the Greek yogurt that I buy. Put the lid back on it. I turn my oven light on and I stick it in the oven overnight. That's it. I'll talk to you in the morning. Okay guys, it's morning and I'm gonna pull this yogurt out of here. Okay, it looks good. It's actually 10 a.m. so I let it sit longer than I normally do, but and that never seems to be a problem on those rare days that I do that. So I'm gonna drain, whoop, one-handed. <laughs> I'm gonna drain off some of that extra whey because I like it to be a little thicker if I can. When I don't have much whey, it actually usually means that it turned out really good for us or the consistency we liked. So next I sort of stir it up a little bit and then before anything else I like to take half a cup out and oh, let's see if I can do this one handed and I save it for the next time I make yogurt. Then I use that same half a cup. I don't know if this seems like a lot or a little. I do just under half a cup of our sweetener whether we're using maple syrup or honey. Those are the, basically the only two things I've ever sweetened it with. I like to go just under half a cup. And I don't know, that may seem like a lot to some people, but this, with this much sweetener, my kids gobble it up right away. <laughs> so it works for us, I guess. Okay, 
Then I stir it up really good and I store it in the fridge or we eat it right away. My kids kind of like it warm. Sometimes they mix it with frozen fruit and it kind of melts the frozen fruit. Uh, so they like it when we have it that morning, but they also eat it when it's been in the fridge and it definitely thickens up some when it's been in the fridge. Another way I've gotten it thicker is by taking some of this and I put it in a coffee filter, like one of those gold coffee filters. Doesn't really matter, but it's just not like a disposable one. Let me show you. So I have used this little coffee filter that I just got off of Amazon because I buy everything off of Amazon almost. And I have put some in here and put a wooden spoon through here and hung it over a container and it really drains out a lot of whey and it makes it almost a cottage cheese flavor. So I've done that before I put sweetener in it before. Uh, if I want less whey, which I believe has all the, a lot of carbs and stuff in it. So I could be wrong. I'm no expert, <laughs> but I do know if you want really thick yogurt, you can do this. So I believe if you use like low fat milk and then drain out a lot of whey, it's closer to Greek yogurt. That's my understanding. I don't do this very often though. So mostly because I'm usually making yogurt for the kids and this big crock pot works great. I will link this in the description box if you're looking for a filter like this. It works really good. I think you can use cheesecloth too because obviously you're making a cheese-like substance. So that would work as well. Um, so here's my question for you. If you already make slow cooker yogurt, I'm wondering, do you make it, uh, do you make a full gallon? And if you do, what do you have to change? Do you have to change the time, the temperature? Do you have to change the active culture or how much you put in? Or can you still just use a half a cup? So I'm really curious to know because I would like to start making a full gallon at a time. So I appreciate your help if you already do that and you can comment down below. But otherwise, thanks for watching guys and we'll talk to you soon. Bye. See, while I was talking to you, one of my kids brought me a bowl. That's how much they love this yogurt. They want me to pour, pour some in there for them.